Hi everyone, my name is Lauren. I'm an ICU nurse and I enjoy helping people memorize pharmacology, um, both by understanding it and also memory tricks so that you can remember this in the future, whether it's on an exam or in practice. So this drug is going to be about cardiac antidysrhythmic drugs. And I'm going to talk about uh, the four different classes of cardiac antidysrhythmics, as well as how to remember them, um, both conceptually as well as memory tricks of how to remember side effects and which drugs would go in which category. So there's four types of antidysrhythmics for classes, um, but first before we get to naming them we need to talk about how your heart generates an impulse and a contraction because dysrhythmias are really an over, um, over stimulus of your heart. Either you're firing too many impulses or impulses from inappropriate places, you're contracting overall too much. Um, and so we can give antidysrhythmics that all in some way block down uh, this impulse or the response of your heart to impulses. So think all the way back to human physiology and you will remember we talked a lot about sodium potassium channels. Um, so remember when your cells are at rest, uh, they're normally pumping out sodium, pumping in potassium. And then when they depolarize, they can send an impulse um, when they depolarize, they have sodium rush in, potassium rush out, and you could have an action potential that moves along the line and can cause a muscle contraction. All right, um, so think about muscles. Once the sodium potassium channel thing does its thing, um, calcium's involved um, in the actual contraction of the muscle. Um, and remember your heart is a muscle. So calcium is absolutely involved in the contraction of your heart muscle. So sodium, potassium, calcium are all important. Um, and if we block down any of these things, we are going to block down your heart and decrease dysrhythmias in your heart. The other thing I want to talk about is the electricity of your heart. So when your heart wants to contract um, in a normal way. It's going to have an impulse generated by your SA node here, and that electricity is going to travel to your AV node here um, through your bundle branch, left and right bundle branches, and your Purkinje fibers. So that's a normal contraction um, or normal impulse um, being sent through your heart. So if we block down anything here, especially your SA node or your AV node conduction, we can decrease the amount of firing that your ventricles do, the amount of contractions that your ventricles go through. So we can decrease your dysrhythmias. So that's the concept behind all of this. Um, we're going to talk about 1 and 3 together, and then we're going to talk about 2 and 4 together because that's how it goes together the best conceptually. So just remember that one and three always go together and two and four go together. The evens and the odds go together with cardiac antidysrhythmic drug classes. So class one is going to be your sodium channel blockers. And that makes sense, right? If we block down sodium, which is your sodium potassium channel is involved in ions moving to cause depolarization. So if we decrease the movement of sodium by blocking sodium channels, we will block down the dysrhythmias that can happen in your heart. So sodium channel blockers. Examples of sodium channel blockers um, are lidocaine, uh, procainamide, Also flecainide. So notice that lots of these have cane in them. So you don't have to memorize all of the sodium channel blockers, but if you can remember that sodium channel blockers have cane in them, or at least a lot of them do, then you can recognize a sodium channel blocker if it comes up in practice or on an exam because it has cane in it. So you might recognize lidocaine as being a numbing medication. You might get it at the dentist or for a minor procedure to help numb you. And it works the exact same way peripherally. It's a sodium channel blocker. So think about pain impulses. You have a painful stimuli in your periphery, and the way that that stimuli is transmitted to your brain to tell you're in pain is through neurons. And neurons send signals with sodium potassium channels, right? So we have that um, 
constant movement of sodium and potassium, and then when we send a signal, they switch, the sodium rushes in, potassium rushes out, and we have an impulse sent. So lidocaine works the same way in the periphery as a sodium channel blocker. If that helps you remember that um, lidocaine, cane, a sodium channel blocker. So one and three go together in my mind because sodium and potassium always go together. Whenever we talk about sodium potassium pumps, sodium potassium channels, we talk about them together. So one and three go together and three is potassium channel blocker. And my main example of potassium channel blocker is amiodarone. I feel like that's the most commonly used potassium channel blocker. So the way I remember amiodarone as a potassium channel blocker is because you have a girl named Amy who is singing an ode to her banana. So Amy is singing an ode to her banana. She's in this opera hall singing at the top of her lungs, and she's really a very terrible singer. She's a terrible singer. She's not attractive. Um, and she causes a lot of side effects, a lot of bad side effects with Amy Oderone, Amy singing her ode to her banana. So the worst side effect here is pulmonary toxicity. So I imagine Amy is just singing at the top of her lungs. She's screaming, she's belting, um, and she's just ruining her lungs because she is singing, screaming so loudly. We have pulmonary toxicity. And Amy is not attractive at all. She's very ugly. And so as the audience, we have phototoxicity. She, we do not want to take pictures of her. Um, we have blurred vision. We're seeing halos around lights. We can't look directly at her. Um, and we're feeling kind of nauseous because we're sitting here listening to her screaming. So we have nausea, we have vomiting, tremors, um, and we may even pass out or faint or feel dizzy watching her. Um, so the most important one here is pulmonary toxicity. So if you want to pick one to remember, that's the most important one. Um, the most detrimental one, um, and sometimes people have pulmonary toxicity that's so bad that they need to be put on a ventilator um, and have high oxygen requirements. So that one is very bad, but sort of incorporated into this Amy singing an ode to her banana, and she's very bad at it and very ugly and singing very, very terribly. So that is Amy Um So one and three go together, sodium potassium channels, and then two and four go together. So two is a beta blocker. And then four is going to be calcium channel blocker. So I put two and four together because um, beta blockers and calcium channel blockers both affect the conduction of electricity in your heart. So they both um, decrease AV node conduction. Beta blockers are going to decrease the amount that your SA node fires and decrease your heart rate. So it's good for people in AFib. Um, it decreases your SA node, but also decreases the signals to get through your AV node. So if you have lots of different places in your atria that are firing, like AFib, it can decrease conduction, block your heart down a little bit, and decrease your ventricular response. Um, so all of our beta blockers end in LOL, and I did a whole video on beta blockers in my vasoactive series, so I encourage you to look at that if you haven't already. Um, my trick for that was that one side effect of beta blockers is that they cause impotence. So beta blockers are baby blockers. And when you tell that joke, people lol, L-O-L, they laugh. Um, so my beta blockers end in lol, like metoprolol, esmolol, atenolol. Everything that ends in lol. So even if you don't memorize it, if you memorize it ends in lol, you can pick it out um, in practice or on an exam. So down here with my class 4 antihistorythmic, I have calcium channel blockers. Um, we talked about that. It's going to decrease AV node conduction, um, and it also is going to decrease my contractility. Um, it, calcium is involved in cardiac um, muscle contraction and muscle contraction in general. Um, so my calcium channel blockers, a couple of them, one's like verapamil, and the other one is cardizem or diltiazem. And I also did a video on calcium channel 
blockers in my vasoactive series. Um, so I encourage you to watch that video as well. Um, but my trick for remembering verapamil as a calcium channel blocker is that Vera and Pam are old ladies who are always telling you to drink your milk. Um, and Cartizem has CA, which stands for calcium, as the first two letters, so calcium channel blocker. So um, keeping one and three together and two to four to get two and four together, um, we talk about one and three sodium and potassium channel blockers being for ventricular dysrhythmias. Um, and then two and four we talk about being atrial dysrhythmias. Which makes sense, right? If we're decreasing AV node conduction, we're decreasing the atrial dysrhythmias that can get through to the ventricles. So if you remember what they do, you can remember that they're going to be better for atrial dysrhythmias. One and three are better for ventricular dysrhythmias. Um, and if you remember your ACLS algorithms, amiodarone is used in the VTAC side of the algorithm, and lidocaine is as well in the pediatric VTAC algorithm. Um, so those are good for ventricular um, reaction because they, ventricular dysrhythmias, because uh, they decrease the ventricular response um, and block that down. Thanks for watching. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you thought, if you found this was helpful, if you have any questions um, or any thoughts on other videos that you'd like to see.